Yo, what is up guys? So for today we're gonna be talking about Destiny 2. Now specifically, we're gonna be looking at the third encounter and the final encounter. Mostly because the third encounter is pretty simple to explain and the third encounter and the second encounter really, really connect a lot. Mostly because of a new mechanic. So up until this point, we had the operator, which was the red buff. The scanner, which was the yellow buff. You get a new buff in this one, which is suppressor or suppression i forgot which one it's called which is essentially the blue one the blue one is a new mechanic which brings a whole bunch of other mechanics as well essentially the suppressor suppresses the boss which means that these little orbs i forgot what they're called i'm just going to call them orbs you actually have to slam these on designated spots so the scanner will actually tell you oh it's left side all of them okay so both of you go slam that now how do you do that well once you activate the encounter you're gonna have a scanner enemy and a operator enemy kill the kill both of them so that one of your teammates can get those the buffs the scanner is obviously gonna look at the the middle where it has these containers each side is going to tell you which side to like to slam the orbs. What my team was doing in the beginning was we would say boss or spawn or door. Now we're doing windows and spawn or door. So window and door. So let's say let's say it's left side door and then right side or uh, right side right side window. That means that the left side is the the door which means that it's the one on the left the farthest left or the the uh, closest left the one what did i say window right window right would be the farthest right uh, i'll obviously have them marked but essentially that's what it is it's not that hard just make sure you're, you're doing your call outs correctly and in worst case scenarios one scanner can literally take it as well so if you don't trust your friends just pick it up and take it with you and then you can shoot the other one. It's not that hard, honestly. Scanner has probably the easiest job out of all of them. The operator is the one that shoots the the data pads like every other encounter. Make sure you shoot the data pad so that way the orbs can actually spawn in. Once the operator shoots them, the operator needs to tell everyone, hey, I shot it, they're, they're spawning because there's four spot spawn locations. There's on in the middle on top and then there's far left and far right you guys have to make sure you guys are aware of that because if it's far right and you guys did not know that it's gonna take you a while to get there and you only have like five to six seconds if i remember correctly until it explodes if it explodes you wipe if i remember correctly yeah so always make sure that you're aware of where the operator is shooting that way you can get ready to go wherever you need to go the last one, the suppression, is the one that gets pretty cool. I, I like the suppression job. Essentially, it's going to be the blue one, like I said. You're going to go to these little balls that are just hovering, I guess. You're going to get into the buff, and once you get into the buff, you shoot the boss. Enough where it says that it, it gives you something to show you. Once you shoot the boss enough times, go to the next one, and then go to the next one. At the last one, I would highly suggest you wait until you, your friends tell you, okay, we have the balls, we're on our way. Once they're on their way, shoot the boss so that way the, the boss can get suppressed. Once the boss is suppressed, that's the, that's the moment where your friends can actually slam the orbs. And again, the scanner must be telling you, oh, it's far left or whatever callouts you want to do. At that point, reset. And remember... Once, once all the, the balls are slammed, one of your buffs is going to become inactive. So let's say, let's say all of all of my friends slam and I'm the scanner. It may be me that my scanner is no not working for me anymore. So that at that point, I would switch out with one of my friends. At that point, you could pick teams specifically, like three teams of two. Where oh, we're the suppression suppression team. We're this team and we're that team. You can do that. Me, my team was just going on the fly and we were just picking up what we needed. If your team is comfortable with pretty much all of the jobs, then I highly suggest you do this just because it's a lot of fun. This this encounter specifically is a lot of fun for me because it's a it's a good type of chaos. 
but if you're not that chummy chummy with your friends or not comfortable enough then you guys can definitely make teams like oh we're the scanner team we're the operator team and we're the the suppression team you can definitely do that you have to do that if i remember correctly five or six times you guys will know you guys did it because you the door will open below you once the door open below you once the door opens below you start running and get to the final point we haven't figured out or i mean not figured out but we haven't seen what happens if everyone doesn't go in i assume that it's a white mechanic but i haven't tried it just because why would you so just make sure everyone gets there once everyone gets there that's pretty much the third encounter honestly this third encounter is not that crazy uh the new addition to the new mechanic is cool i like it a lot it does change how you play in the final encounter so the boss encounter this is where it's going to get crazy the call outs that me and my friends were doing is going to be a little bit weirder than most people i know a lot of people are do numbers from the the spawn left they do one two three four five six seven or no one two three four five six i know a lot of people did that i we just did it the easiest way we thought of which was essentially um this is spawn this is blue and this is orange essentially that's how i saw it it's just easier so let's say i was scanner team and essentially i would see which area was like lit and I would say, oh, it's orange left and blue right. And then we would type that in chat and then that was it. That was honestly the easiest way for me just because numbers kind of fucks me up sometimes. So I just kind of told them like, oh, we should just do like this. And thankfully they said yes. So again, do your call outs however you want. If numbers do not confuse you, then by all means do it. It's just for me. Uh, I would get confused with what number which was which so I would go to the wrong one. I know myself That's pretty much how I always fucked up eyes of Riven. So yeah, that's, that's just I wanted to just simplify it So you'll have a couple of teams like I said you'll have operator you'll have scanner and then you'll have The suppression suppression pretty much the same job you suppress the boss so that everyone can slam the orbs Scanner has the same job as well. It's the operator that changes a little. From what I remember, the operator actually shoots these bubbles when you're captured. So operator only does that. And that's really it. There's a, there's actually, yeah, that's it. If I remember correctly, they're the ones who like take you out of the bubble. That's really it. So scanner scans, uh, suppression supp uh, suppresses, and the operator actually takes you out of the bubbles. You'll um, Obviously, I'll be showing you guys right now. So a regular one phase would be, since I'm the scanner, I would kill everything as fast as I can so the scanner enemy can come out. Once the scanner enemy comes out, I call buffs as fast as I can. So that way, once we start shooting the legs, I can... I can shoot the legs without worrying about telling my friends where to go. Once the the boss has his legs laid out, I suggest you shoot the front ones first, just because they're a lot easier. And then once you shoot the legs out, he'll drop the orbs, get the orbs, go to your designated slam dunk thing, slam the orb. Once all the orbs are dunked, one of your abilities is going to be essentially inactive so let's say for example i would not have my buff anymore the scanner one so i would tell my friend hey can we switch out okay cool we switch out be careful there's not there's a falling captains that will fuck you up if you're not careful we'll switch out buffs right there and then once we switch out buffs he would let me know like okay i would like or, or i would ask him which are the buffs or which are call them out he would call them out i would type them out and then we would get ready for to shoot the back legs once we shoot the back legs, do the same thing. Once you guys slam the orbs, all of this, obviously, while making sure that the operator is shooting the designated person that is trapped within a ball. I will have gameplay of that as well. Make sure the operator is always making sure what to do because they are vital to making sure you don't die. But after that, honestly, you'll be into the damage phase. Once the damage phase happens, the boss will go into the middle. And you're gonna wait a bit, a bit before you go in because he'll fuck you up if you're not careful. And I suggest you go into the into the area 
by jumping. Don't go walking because you'll fuck our, you'll you'll fuck the team up because you won't be able to be get respawned because the the flying debris will always kill you before you can move. So highly suggest you just jump over and once that happens you make sure you have divinity uh whatever we weapon of choice you want honestly for damage phase you could probably run well definitely run cloud strike cloud strike is probably going to be the best option just because from what i've heard it does stupid amounts of damage slug shotguns are great my team ended up using divinity with izanagi and grenade launchers you could do a bunch of stuff here, but if you want my honest choice, slug shock, slug shotguns, or or cloud strike. Honestly, those are going to be your best choices. So once you're there, do as much damage as you can. Make sure the divinity bitch is always getting the the shots in. Make sure you're shooting the divinity bubble. Once you get to a certain point, the boss will basically slam you guys out. Once you guys get slammed out, make sure you guys go back in and just do the damage phase. You can do a pretty big chunk of health if you're all leveled and know what to do. And once the damage phase is over, rinse and repeat, literally do the same thing all over again. Uh, make sure that whoever did not have the right buff has the right buff. Make sure that no one's buff is inactive, you know, stuff like that. And reset, just, and that's pretty much it. Uh, like I said, before, before the people slam make sure that the suppressors are ready to suppress the boss so that way they can slam the orb in uh, I don't know if I explained that or not, but I did explain in the third encounter Basically the way it works is once the boss is stunned or suppressed then you can slam the orb So I would suggest you have two teams With the orbs just so that way you don't die from the stacks and rinse and repeat once you get to the small chunk of health that he has he'll start actually walking around and doing the electric like lightning thing he'll that will one shot you if you're not careful so make sure you're always moving and honestly if you guys are running literally anything of value like if you're using slugs then obviously you're going to be using anarchy as well that's a great pairing if you're using cloud strike then even it's still good Honestly, the last part is just him walk, like moving around and trying to kill everyone. Make sure you just move out of the way of the, the dangerous things and just be smart and you'll eventually kill him. Once you kill him, that's it, really, that's it. Like, honestly, this raid's not that hard. Uh, I know I made that video of saying, the, oh, it's not fair and all this, but it is easy now that the contest modifier is not here. Like, so that's pretty much it. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think. I love this raid. This raid is awesome as fuck. It's one of my favorites and yeah get that get that loot man the weapons in the loot in the raid is so good i'm definitely going to be reviewing a lot of them but yeah let me know your thoughts in the comments below if you guys want to follow me on my social media outlets links are in the description below thank you everyone for the support i really do appreciate it and other than that i will see you guys later